no third person in Castlevania to date has been very well received. So it seems like Konami was in what the hell do we have to lose mode when they went ahead and decided to give developer Mercury Steam a shot. They're responsible for such hits as Clive Barker's Jericho, a title with a whopping 63 on Metacritic. If I were asked to describe Lords of Shadow using just one word, that word would be inconsistent. From the frame rate, which ranges from 60 to 16, to the combat, to the story, the game is a model of inconsistency. When it's good, Castlevania Lords of Shadow stands right there among the best in the genre. I honestly found it, in short stints, to be every bit as enjoyable as something like God of War. Unfortunately though, when it's bad, it's almost controller breakingly so. It all comes down to not being able to sustain greatness due to oversights that clearly mark an inexperienced developer. For example, one of God of War's key strategies is when you time a block so that you're able to deliver a counterattack. That same feature is mimicked in Lords of Shadow, but enemies strike literally without warning, so actually being able to ever pull off the time to block is a die roll at best. Thus, instead of being able to take advantage of the impressive arsenal of moves a game gives you, you will instead be forced to use stick and move tactics unless you like leaving yourself open for attack. This means you'll find two or three moves that you like, and repeat them ad nauseum throughout the game. Also, just about every enemy has the same attack pattern. They lunge at you, lunge at you unblockably, or they just say fuck it and send out a shockwave of some kind that hits everything near them. There are a few variations of course, but battles will become super easy once you learn how to game the system. Now, Mercury Steam has to be given credit for their sheer ambition. This project was obviously something they felt very confident and strongly about, and it really shows in the game's fantastic art direction and sense of scale. Again though, these are ultimately double-edged swords, as sure, it's nice to look at these huge locales, but no level really ever opens up to any space larger than, say, a movie theater parking lot. And while there are some nice effects going on, that frame rate is a huge eyesore, as the moments when it does hit 60 just piss you off. The obvious homages to games like God of War and Shadow of the Colossus prove that the people at Mercury Steam are indeed lovers of great games, and they do manage to keep enough originality in Lords of Shadow so as not to feel like a ripoff, but still, they needed to study the refinements of God of War, Ninja Gaiden, and Bayonetta, the things that they've done over time that make them work so well. As mentioned earlier, this even extends to the story, where we're told the entire time by the narrator, done incredibly dramatically by Patrick Stewart, by the way, to find the one he seeks. Who or what was that strange creature? That the hero Gabriel is growing more and more enraged and evil, to the point where he's unrecognizable. But Gabriel never changes. He keeps an incredibly calm and collected demeanor the whole time, and he even looks the same. No glowing eyes, no yelling, nothing. I mean, if he's so different, show me! And it has to be said that this game takes forever to get going. I really couldn't stand it until Chapter 4, when finally things got moving, and holy god is Chapter 2 way too long. I mean, it lasts a few hours on its own, and Chapter 4 is barely anything. Inconsistent. Still, once things got moving in Chapter 5, I actually really enjoyed myself for a while. Then, as if to just pad the game's length, the last few chapters are nothing but puzzle after puzzle and cutscenes galore. So just expect to have a few uninterrupted hours set aside of your day around Chapter 10. I could go on. I know I'm being very critical, but the truth is that I see a lot of potential here. The groundwork is there for a very good game, and Castlevania Lords of Shadow isn't bad, I think it's worth a playthrough if you're at all a fan of God of War and Dante's Inferno, but it has some serious flaws, not the least of which is the first four hours are a real grind. If you can weather the storm though, fun times do lie ahead. Just don't expect the truly great moments to last all that long. B minus. Thank you for watching. As always, please check out controlaltkill.org and check out my podcast, Whatever, with Don and Justin every Tuesday night on Ustream, and it's also up on iTunes. Thanks a lot, and until next time.